Hi, good morning. We're here with Mark Millard from Way Better. How are you doing, Mark? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. You're most welcome. I'm looking forward to this interview. So if you could just give us a little bit of background as to exactly who you are, what it is that you do, and how long you've been doing it for, please. Right. Well, my name's Mark Millard. I'm the founder of Way Better Protein Chocolate, um, a very new brand, and we've been going around about 11 months now. So we're still really, really new, um, learning everything as we go along. And this is my very first uh, podcast and interview. So another school day for me. <laughs> Brilliant. So fresh out of the box, so to speak, excuse the pun, but uh, start up there. So in terms of your USP, let's go straight into that. What makes right. way better stand out in the marketplace? We are right. We are the UK's only so high protein, no added sugar, vitamin infused chocolate bar on the market at the moment. So our customers, one customer actually spoke to us a long time ago and said, "You are the um, the love child of your favourite protein bar and traditional chocolate bar," and we've kept that ever since. So we're quite unusual where we sit in the marketplace. We're not that pro. We're not a protein bar. We're not a full-fledged traditional chocolate bar. We're right in the middle somewhere. So that's our USP. Awesome. So what sparked your uh, desire to create that product then? What's the backstory to Ooh. it? The backstory goes back a long, long time. So um, I was an overweight child to start with. Mm -hmm. So um, I lost weight when I was 12 years old. I was really overweight. I lost four and a half stone in a year. And that created my passion for the fitness industry as a whole. Um, from that, I went down the route as a sports scientist, and since then, I've never stopped. Like my love of nutrition, fitness, and basically a balanced lifestyle, and that's what happened and why the the bar came about. Really, um, exactly what I've said to you about with the the love child of the favourite protein bar and traditional chocolate bar. I wanted to create a product that was balanced, and when I was having the protein bars and everything like that in the marketplace what i was seeing happen as the protein bars increased in sales in the marketplace you could see that the protein bars on like one aisle there and the chocolate bars are over here yeah. and i'm thinking well you know i like the protein bars but really what i want is the, the chocolate bar over here and <laughs> you could see that there was like a, to me a gap in the market like why has no one just done a, a really healthy great tasting chocolate bar um and i didn't think it had been done very well so um we took about four years R and D and tried to work out how to make a chocolate bar taste way better, and that's what we came up with. So, um, you know, last um, a year ago now, uh, we put it onto the marketplace, and um, we've been working hard ever since getting the the brand and the product known. Fantastic. So, how, what does it take to get a chocolate bar that's tasty and balanced oh. to market? Those those four years describe that. Um, a lot of hard work, a lot of um, knocking on doors. So finding out where to get the protein from, asking companies for samples. Um, and that all sounds, you know, you know, people go, how do you start? And I think I could do any, from what I've done now, I think I could do any business. I think I could make anything. If someone said to me, make up your own aftershave, I would, I know how to go about it. And, I, you know, I know where to go and look and simply got to knock on doors and ask people for favors and you know we started by can i get can i try this protein powder so i would ring up companies and say you know could i get some protein powder to sample they turn around and say we only do 25 kilogram bags and it'd cost me hundreds or thousands of pounds and i'd say look I, I need a favor i need a small amount of protein to get started to to start testing in my own kitchen um, and you ask these favors and people, you know, they, they look after you. you. I think you've got to ask. That's, mm -hmm. that's the first bit. Start asking, start knocking on doors. You will be, the door will be shut in your face <laughs> many times before you get a yes, but you've got to keep doing that. Um, and I think that's a great start to what it takes to get a brand going. You're going to get that door slammed in your face. A lot of times you've just got to keep knocking on doors, got to keep trying. So once we've got the protein, I went to independent chocolate um, makers, manufacturers, people that were literally just would be able to make the chocolate from home yeah. and start to R&D it myself. Once I got a product to a certain point, then I started looking at manufacturers. And then that's a, that's a, then a totally different ball game. So um, the manufacturers that I'm with now, honestly, I look at them like family. 
they're, they're that good to me. But yeah. it's taken, you know, the better part of, like I said, that four years to get to that point with them. They've, you know, they want to know what I'm after, know, you know, how I'm going to work. Am I someone that they want to look after? You know, why, why should I be looked after by them? So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of backwards and forwards with the manufacturers to find the right one, you know, scalability, cost, what they can do. You know, you've got, you, we've, it's a team effort. You know, I've got to work with my manufacturers. So there's a lot that went into getting the right manufacturers first. Building those relationships, trust, Absolutely, yeah. Due um, diligence on everything. I mean, honestly, um, a, a great story is, is what the manufacturers, this sounds really cruel, but this is what it takes, and I think people should know this. Um, at one point, I was getting to the point where I needed to get a proper sample done, you know, at their facility and have a, a, a sample done to such a level that it could be scaled up. So I remember them telling me that um, they could do a 10-kilogram sample which yeah. is, is quite a lot of chocolate anyway. We do, a, our bars are 75 grams. So you can imagine how many chocolate bars are in there. Um, I'd be getting all the products in, but we'd be using their um, new product development kitchen there. Now that kitchen is reserved for the retailers, really. You know, the likes of Tesco and people like that. They're the ones in there. And and so to, so the basic costs a lot of money. How much money I wasn't ready for. So at this point here, I'm asking for the samples. Um, they've said you need a 10 kilogram sample and all your bars will be made. And, and that allow, the 10 kilogram sample allows you to scale up in production because for chocolate production, you need a lot of chocolate, you know, with, with big numbers. Um, and they basically yeah. turned around and said, so each bar, someone, someone can do the maths on this one when they want, but each bar will be about 250 pounds. <laughs> wow. So we're talking thousands if not tens of thousands of pounds for initial prototype which might not work yeah might taste terrible but that was that was that was the end of my journey if i'd not done it mm -hmm. and what happened was this was done on a phone call and, the, and they basically dropped that on me and said look if we if this is the point now that you're ready to go this is what you're going to have to do and and you know it was either that so i'm on the phone call you feel absolutely sick and you're going, well, I've got to do it because there's no more going forward. Mm -hmm. So basically I said yes to them and said, right, no, you just have to go for it. There was no putting the phone down. It was a case of yes or no at that point there. So I said yes. And um, it went quiet a couple of seconds. And he said, no, that's great, but we'll look after you. No payment. It was a test. Oh, fantastic. It was, a test. It was just a test to see if I had you know, the gumption, the, the, you know, the motivation, yeah. was I putting everything into this? Did they, did, they, did they want to take me on? Because if I said no, they know that my heart wasn't 100% in it. And a great I went, story. A great test. <laughs> yeah, but it just shows that, you know, this is what it takes to get in with manufacturers and people need to know that because it, that's, that's the relationship with any manufacturers is everything. Well, they're Everything. investing in you, aren't they? In a, to exactly. A, to a big degree, yeah. and likewise, vice versa. Yeah. And, you know, the manufacturer I'm with work 20... I mean, they're a huge company. They work 24-7. Again, they're with all the big brands. Um, so why did they want to look after little old me? Why should I be allowed to come into there? And, again, I'm probably the one that's going to cause them the most pain because I've got very small order quantities. Yeah. I'm learning everything. Um, but they've seen something in the brand. They've seen something that maybe is a bit of a niche to the market, something that's a little bit different. So they're prepared to back me. But at the same time, they've got to make sure that they're backing the right person as well that's behind that company and behind that brand. So, um, yeah, that was – I still remember that day now because I went from feeling – you know, like so low, so yeah. ill and just saying, right, I'll have to do this and thinking what I'm going to say to my family and saying, I'm going to have to put this money into it yeah. to literally seconds later going, oh, they're, they're going to allow the weight, me to do it. The weight left your shoulders. It's like, it's like when the lottery, Yeah, you know, and again, that is, I think for a startup business, a challenger brand like myself, that's what every day is like. It's, you know, you, you, you've say, just got a challenge around the oh, corner after that one. Every single day, every single day. Yeah. Um, I, I'd love to hear from another founder that hasn't had that. Um, if they have, they've got a, a brilliant journey. But I think for most of us, 
it is, like I said, knocking on doors every day, getting it slammed back in your face, then knocking on the next door and taking those highs and lows every day, taking the punches um, and learning from it. Like I said, every day is a school day. That's how I look at it. So your journey today, if you had one word to describe it, what would it be? The journey? Yeah, today. One word. World win, <laughs> I think. I, I think that's the West Bay point. It. You just yeah. you don't know what to expect. Um, you know, every, you know, we, we've just been away this weekend at our first trade show. We've got some great contacts back from that. I never expected some of those contacts back, but for and and of course we had some stuff that we've we've learned along the way as well. Stuff that you know we didn't know about, and you know we've added that into our knowledge base now. So yeah. you know, you know, the, no, getting a knockback isn't a bad thing. It's just something that you learn from. Mm-hmm. so Definitely. you know take those knocks every single day yeah i mean you only learn by getting knocked down but you but then you've got to stand back up again sure well you've shown a lot of uh, resilience persistence already so far so i'm excited to to follow your journey in terms of the future and what that looks like and what are the challenges you can foresee um what are, how does that look like going ahead um we're in great conversations at the moment we've got Again, all conversations, but mm-hmm. to start the conversation is the important bit. So again, even if a conversation doesn't work out with a particular retailer or anything like that, we know that we're now in their sites. They know the name, they know the brand, and we can always come back to that. So um, without giving away too much, we are in some really good talks, both in the UK and um, unbelievably abroad as well. Um, I mean, one of those companies is Spinney's in the UAE. Um, they've said they'd like to take on our chocolate so we're waiting to hear back from them and and again in 11 months i'd never expect to be exporting the pro- the product shortly um but these are the you know and again i've never i've never done that before yeah um i'm learning on the job i'm finding out what that takes um so in in that sense the retailers um that's all looking really good um getting the product known about that's everything getting in with the retailers is one side of the equation but then getting the product activated is the other and that kind of come down to me a little bit more and again we've done really well on that so far um we've just come back from television um center um white city if i'm right and we did a pop-up and activation there um again it's a cost it's an expense it's a lot of time and effort it was a great time, but again, that led on to other things. So we're shortly going to be sampling a pop-up at Soho House, which will be amazing. Um, one thing that will be coming up once this is aired live is that we will be on TV shortly as well. So yeah. last year, um, it was actually a customer that um, was buying the product online mm-hmm. and sent me a little link and said, you need to go on this. Um, and the show was actually... Um, channel four aldi's next big thing yeah and before the chocolate bar came out last year i was watching that as a customer mm-hmm. thinking that'll be amazing to be on there i'm looking at these new brands and these entrepreneurs and these founders and listening to what they've got to say and looking at their products um and this customer that sent me through this link i looked at it um it was a friday and it had to be done by the monday it's like very short notice yeah. and i thought i've got nothing to lose but i remember that program put it in within minutes, d- did it, and then had the phone call Monday morning and said, we'd like to uh, have a chat with you. Awesome. So we've ended up on um, Channel 4, Ali's Next Big Thing. Um, it, hopefully this will be played after <laughs> it's aired. We'll be on TV Tuesday the 23rd of April. Yeah. Um, so again, um, what an experience. Um, a great activation for the brand. I hope everybody watches it. Um, but the most nerve-wracking day you can imagine. <laughs> so, I, yeah. Why is it, tell, tell us more about the nerves, nerve-wracking. What was the reason for that? Um, well, apart from a 7 a.m. start on camera, um, <laughs> this is, my again, my first podcast here. This is nerve-wracking enough to be with you, Mike, as well. Um, again, it's, it's that learning thing. The more you do, the better you get at them. But with the TV, I'm thinking this is my baby that I've spent four years working on, I've been in the business six months. Yeah. I really don't know enough. And I'm talking to Aldi on national TV. Um, and I was absolutely bricking it, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, it had too. to be ready to film at 7 a.m. It was an yeah. eight-hour filming yeah. session. Um, and all I remember is the red light that was facing me all the time. They always have a yeah. camera on you. So um, you're never quite sure what's going on. And then, you know, you have that ups and downs of where 
you don't know exactly when you're going to have to go and pitch. So if you see this program, there are six businesses on there. Um, each of us um, on this particular day was to do with chocolate on, you know, trying to get in with Aldi. And at some point they're going to call you up there. So for basically the most part of the day, you wait your name to be called out. And then when your name isn't called out, you can breathe again. And then when your name is called out, your heart rate goes through the roof. Yeah, yeah. And, and we've got to go and pitch the product. Um, and to be perfectly honest, it was a great experience. Um, we're very, very lucky to be on such a program. Um, we're now just preparing ourselves to see what comes from that program. Mm -hmm. um, and again, no one can give you a real answer. And I think for me personally, I'm looking at the world economy as a whole. You know, are people going to go online and suddenly buy this product? Um, but what I was very lucky um, to be allowed to do is I contacted a lot of CEOs from um, brands that had already been on TV that I knew about. So people might know Perfect Ted, Crave Crisps, Freddy's Fruit Sweets. Um, there's a few more as well. I think Bug Grub as well. We contacted a lot of these businesses um, to talk to the CEOs, talk to the founders. And they actually did. They like picked up the phone to us, which is really hard to get hold of these people because we yeah. said, we're on the TV program. Can you give us any advice? And they just said, prepare yourselves. Just be be ready for what the TV will do because it's a, a, huge, a huge activation for your brand. Even if you're on TV for just five minutes, um, but you've got your product there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, we've just a couple of days ago, I've been told of the, the date. I said um, 23rd of April. Mm -hmm. um, we have no idea how it's going to look. We don't We don't see the edit. People think that you might see the edit before you go out. You don't see the edit at all. You've got no control over that. Um, we'll be on TV, probably total duration. What We spent eight hours filming down there, probably five minutes worth of footage used on the day. Um, the main bit of footage is myself and my partner going up and explaining the, the product and the brand to the Aldi buyers and at the time we had no bad feedback at all it all went down really really well um but just for clarity because again this should be aired after uh, we didn't win it but I knew why we wouldn't win it because we're not an Aldi price point brand you know we're yeah. a premium brand we're more along the lines of protein bars hue hip with that price point there um but we are a high protein product which Aldi buyers love as well Mm -hmm. So um, experience and you say great exposure and yeah. doing something completely that you've different that you've not done before and this journey that you're going on it was found really exciting and yeah yeah I'm just uh, yeah really excited to see how uh, how things pan out for you yeah well again I'll I'll get back in contact with you after the after it's been aired and we can talk then because yeah that's a good again, time. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's the thing. But it'd be interesting. Again, we just don't know. I mean, this yeah. is it. You know, we don't know from day to day what's going on with things. Mm -hmm. We do our best every single day. But the TV show is going to be something that there's very few people that have ever experienced it. So mm -hmm. we've made sure that um, stock is ready. Yeah. Um, we've made sure that we're on Amazon. Um, we've got told a lot of times your website will blow up. Um, it won't be able to take what everyone's start looking at it. You know, your server will crash. So we've had to try and make sure all these things are in place. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, even emails, they've said you just won't be able to cope with the amount of emails you'll get back. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a lovely problem to have. I'm not going to knock it because yeah. it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, but we're just going to try and do the best with that opportunity that we can and, and see where it great, takes us. Great summary there. So what's the biggest lesson so far that you've learned? I mean, it sounds like there's going to be plenty more to come. But so far, if there's one lesson you could share, what would that be? As an entrepreneur, I think, or a founder, if you like, I think one is just get stuff done. Have a fa fail. I, again, we spoke about this earlier on, but fail fast. Yeah. I think don't be scared to fail. Um, understand that's part of the process. Don't be disappointed by it. Um, you know, if that door gets slammed in your face, why has it been slammed in your face? They'll give you feedback. They'll they'll find. You know, um, we've been told many times you know we're a 75 gram bar um and a lot of people want us as a snack bar and we're just not in that space yet yeah. um cash flow so you know we know that's there so we've learned we're going right there's lots of people that want us as a snack bar right when we can do that we're going to do it we've learned from it but yeah. don't get disappointed that we can't be on their shelf straight away because that's just the way it is so i think learn like take everything as a learning curve every day fail fast um and just get 
I'll say it, but in the best way, but get shit done. Get it done. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't. I think so many people maybe, especially with an idea, sit back on it. Don't think like, I'll get it done tomorrow. I'll start this tomorrow. I'll start. Yeah. Don't, just get it done. Just yeah. start. And then. I think, just crack on. <laughs> get crack, yeah, because that's the only way you're going to do it. There's there's no, um, again, like I said, I'm a, a sports scientist by trade. I look after people's diets and stuff like that. And it's the same thing, I think, with, with diets. Yeah. I'll start tomorrow. No, just get started get yeah. get started don't don't think that you've got to have everything perfectly you know everything lined up and the you know you've got six weeks completely free and you can do it because that won't work then you've just got to get started so jump in with both feet don't be scared to fail um and you know just keep so i mean my little saying is there's no such thing i mean there's no such thing as brick walls there's only hurdles so i'm not going to get stopped but sometimes you're going to have to jump so, yeah. you know, that's it. That's that's how I look at it. You've just got to keep yeah. going. Yeah, just got to keep going. So what, in, I mean, I can hazard a guess at what inspires you from earlier about talking about the reason that you set up the business, but any other inspiration that you use, so the people that you work with, customers, friends, family, things you read, listen to, anything like that for inspiration. Yeah, I mean, I'm very I'm yeah. very lucky with the people that I know in my life. I mean, first of all, my family. So again, a lot of the stuff I do now, I'm always thinking about my boys. You know, I've got a six year old and ten year old. Um you know, we're, we're, as a family, we're, we're into health and fitness. We like going up for walks, they play rugby, they dance, they do all these things. Um and I want them to have, I mean, a, a little goal for me, a, a little aspiration for me to do. I'd love to create a healthy kind of Freddo type snack. Yeah. Um, I don't think anything is like that on the market at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we could do that. And I'd love to see that kind of in the hands of kids. You know, I think, again, we always talk about healthy eating and everything like that, you know, but it's more adult based. Now, what, what yeah. you know, chocolate is loved by children everywhere. Um, I know our, my kids love this chocolate um again why has no one done that so that's a space that i want to look to in the future for myself personally so again um and, and we love chocolate as a family you know we enjoy it around the tv we enjoy it when we go over it. so again just doing products it sounds selfish but for me first you know yeah. I, I want to love the product that i'm doing um yeah. but then um the customer base that we've got at the moment again that's another thing that we look at you know since we went on instagram and facebook and all these things We've actually learned who were which customers purchasing the product, mm -hmm. which you know that's um, pretty vital. But you, yeah, you I mean, understand yeah. It on, yeah, somehow. I mean, when we first started, again, I'm a sports scientist by trade. I'm in the mm -hmm. the sports industry, and I thought I'd be making a, a sports nutrition product, and it's not. It, it yeah. again, it sits on that fence beautifully. We're not a protein bar. We're not a chocolate bar. We're kind of right in the middle there. Um, so yes, we are supplying people in gyms that want that type of product, high protein, no added sugar. They want the taste and the texture of chocolate. They just want to enjoy chocolate and the vitamins in there. But at the same time, we're actually more mass market. And we're, I would say, females 20 to 45 years old, families, mums um, that just want to look after themselves, want, want to enjoy the chocolate, have a more balanced lifestyle. And if they can find a product that is got the higher protein, which kind of we all know is in trend in fashion. We want to get more protein in diet. No added sugar, which everything's going that way. Mm -hmm. And then, again, the reason we actually added that the, the vitamins into the product was actually through the pandemic, which I saw then vitamins becoming much more kind of like in fashion. Um, people are more aware of that more than ever now. Um, then they've got all those factors in there while still enjoying a chocolate bar. So um, the customer base there, was important to listen to what they're after and who we're, yeah. who we're aiming at. And if you look at a lot of my socials now, again, it's a shoestring budget and a lot of it's just me and my family because we are we are who we're aiming at. It's, it's yeah. a family bar. Um, I mean, a protein bar might be looked at as pre and post training. A chocolate bar, whenever you like. I mean, you can have it at breakfast, mm -hmm. it, you know, on the commute. Um, yeah, you've had a bad yeah. day at work. What do you do? sit down in front, you watch Netflix, you get your chocolate bar out. You know, you don't so go to the <laughs> That's, you know, you, mm -hmm. Literally, chocolate is everywhere. We always said there's a way uh, a, um, a way better moment for you. Chocolate is yeah. universal when you can have it. You know, mm -hmm. you can have it in your lunchbox um, for the children. Um, like I said, 
at the cinema, it, it's everywhere. So we've kind of, we can't kind of put ourselves in a niche that sense. So, you know, we are a, a family mass market product now. Um, yeah. And then I suppose the final one would be, I'm very lucky with the people that I know in the industry a little bit, which have kind of um, not only um, advised me a little bit, but also um, I look up to, I've got um, a friend of mine, or two friends really, that have done really well in this space as well. They've got a product out there, a very big brand. Mm -hmm. um, everyone will, will know the brand, really. Um, and I saw what they did. But I also know how hard it was on them. You know, you know, I, I was very lucky to see the back end of it. Because what you see at the front, the shiny side, yeah, you know, that bit that's that yeah, it's very different, yeah, which is like success kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's I think like any a case with any kind of it doesn't matter if it's a you know, a brand like a chocolate bar or a hairdresser or anything like that, you know. At the front, it's got to look nice and clean and shiny and look really nice for the customers. And behind the scenes, you know, there's bills to pay, there's cash flow, there's yeah. sickness, illness, you know, all these things that go behind. But, you you know, I know what went on there. So, again, um, they'll if they ever watch this podcast, they'll know, they'll know who they are. Um, but they are very, you know, they, you know, they're like who I look up to a lot of. You know, I watched their journey. I knew what they went through. Um, and that's given me a bit of like, you know, I kind of know what to expect at the moment. Good stuff. So lastly then, Mark, latest news around what you're up to. We've covered quite a lot and there's a lot of things coming up. So, um, But even if it's just a case of sharing your website and letting us know where we can buy these chocolate bars, feel free. Oof, right. Main place to buy at the moment is online. So go to um, waybetter.co.uk. Get that right. Yes, that's the right one. Um <laughs> Um, we've got partners out there as well. So again, if you want a small amount of chocolate bars, there are a lot of other businesses on there. If you go to our website, you'll find out where you can buy them. And we also have a site map there for the individual retailers to go to. Um, but we are in some great conversations coming up. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we'll be in some of the bigger retailers um, in the next six months, maybe a year. Um, but again, that sounds like a long, for a lot of people going six months or a year, but that's how long these conversations take and, and we've yeah. got a lot of learning to do in the, in, in the meantime. Um, but we'll be getting samples out there. Well, like I said, we're at Soho House. I think we're in London in the famous Ray store, which is like a pop-up store that's around for 30 days. So we'll be down there shortly. So if, if people are available around the London area, they can pop in there and come and see our bars. Um, but yeah, if you look at our website, look at our socials, if we, if we get in with retailers, um, please that's where we'll be advertising it first so come and say hi online excellent exciting times mark and i sincerely wish you all the best for the future of the business and the next part of the journey that you're going to go on no thank you very much mike and thanks for having me on pleasure